Are you guys playing hide and seek? Who's best at hide and seek? Me. <laughs> Welcome to the flight video for flight five of the Hawkins Super Lancer. We're currently here in Michigan for my sister's wedding. <laughs> Taking the time to uh, do some video editing while the kids play in the uh, shadow of the Ingham County Courthouse here in Mason, Michigan. So flight four, as well as the first stalls for the airframe. It was important to set the uh, handling qualities baseline with the flaps up as we proceed towards a flaps down handling qualities check which is probably going to be the most critical flying of this program. Without Chase we weren't comfortable doing any flap extensions uh, but this was important for establishing that baseline. So as far as your stuff, uh, the cargo should be fine as far as the numbers and yeah. uh, frequencies and stuff. And then switch over to your frequency when you... When that got a little complicated. Were you able to keep track of the most part of where I was? Uh, no, I had no idea. Okay, got it. So that question was about uh, keeping up with uh, radio frequency changes as during the flight. Uh, on the previous flight, it had been the first flight that uh, Justin had been there to support with Chase. So it was the first time that Hawken was our first line of defense for keeping up with comms. There had just been some issues with him knowing where I was going. Uh, some of that was driven by uh, debris on the runway thing, which uh, was a whole other thing. After the FOD thing, I wanted to stay and hear where it was. Yeah. And I checked in with you and then came back to see where he was. Yeah. And I saw him on the runway. Stopped a couple of times, but I don't know. Yeah, he said it was a screw. So shortly after takeoff on flight four, uh, the uh, landing aircraft behind us, I believe it was a, a Cirrus, which is funny, um, uh, said that they saw a debris on the runway. I was just barely off the runway, and you know, obviously we hadn't had a successful, really successful flight in the airplane for a while, so the idea that something major might have fallen off the airplane didn't seem that far-fetched. And it took like 20 minutes or 25 minutes for the a tower to send out a truck to go uh, scan the runway and about the time the truck got on the runway they, they asked the, the guy in the Sears what was the debris they were looking for and the guy in the Sears said it was a screw like implying it was like you know a screw like we were convinced you know a, a horizontal tail had fallen off or you know something really major and it turned out it was actually anyway something really small they never found the screw so we are briefing uh, flight with a new car. Yeah. Woohoo! Uh, we're going to talk about weather and notams. Uh, for an overview, we're going to take off. We're going to climb up to 10,000 feet north of the field. We're going to uh, dive, expand the envelope, uh, hit the cruise points to get a rough hack of cruise, and uh, do some clean stalls and then RTB. I'd like to thank all of our Patreon supporters as well as Butler Parachute for making the best parachute in the business. This is the last flight before we start swinging the flaps. So uh, this was a really important last moment uh, before we get to the really exciting stuff, the stuff that Hawken worked so hard for so long, you know, designing these custom flaps, installing the custom flaps. And we've been doing all this work with cooling and all these other things, all building up to the first flap deployment. And this was the last flight or planned to be the last flight uh, before we actually swing the flaps for the first time. So it was a very exciting sort of last moment as we prepare for some of the coolest flying of the program. <laughs>
Special aircraft information, Papa Current, altimeter 3004, wind calm. And Ramada Tower, it's Terminal 320, Hotel Lima. We'd like to do a couple of orbits during the climb here. Would you rather we stay in the traffic pattern or try to keep it north of the runway? Terminal 0, Hotel Lima, north of the runway would work better. Uh, as seen on the uh, flight videos for the Jelly Bean Thor, uh, having good stall video is really valuable. So on that program, I think I looked at those stall videos, you know, I don't know, I spent many hours looking at that stall footage. Uh, and having a great shot uh, that includes the pilot's hand, so you can see elevator position and the airspeed indicator as well as the horizon is really valuable. So right here you can see I'm taking the, the camera, which, you know, because the canopy opens and closed, take the camera off the pre rear window, which doesn't move, and put it on the front window, which does move, and now you can get it close enough. You got a really good shot of the airspeed indicator uh, for the uh, stall stuff. Uh, so for the dive testing, two company policies that come into play, sort of wasabi things that maybe are worth explaining. Number one, uh, anything above VA, first time we go there with wasabi, we do stick wraps and treat it like a dive test. The second policy is stick wraps. You know, we've talked about this several times in other videos. Um, I'll, I'll put links in the uh, description below, but the short answer is that stick wraps are not the ideal way uh, to check for flutter. But at the same time, um, I feel responsibility to the final operator of the airplane since we're not going to do um, exciters and the wingtips and accelerometers and all the you know the right way to do flutter testing. This is something that we can say we did when we were there to to be confident that there's not uh, a flutter issue. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, like a stick wrap, there, there's lots of different ways to do a stick wrap. Um, the goal is to put a step input in, really, really a hard input. The idea being you excite a really wide range of frequencies in the in the surface and in the, uh, you can see I'm not super high energy on these because uh, if you've been flying an airplane, you know what where the natural frequencies are and you can just uh, hit it hard enough to hit that frequency. Again, uh, this is not the best way to expand a flutter envelope. It's better than nothing and way less expensive. Anyway. Uh, so uh, position calls end up being sort of a critical safety item. The idea is that if you're out diving an airplane, you know, you come over the top and it's uh, uh, you know, 100 mile an hour, 110, 120, you know, okay, 250, and then silence. Um, that may be the last call that you made, right? Um, you know, the airplane scattered and uh, you hit the, the parachute and now you're swinging down and uh, the guy on the ground, he never got a call that says like, I'm crashing. And so as a result, um, having good position um, in, in position descriptions before you start the test point is something that we try to remember to do uh, at Wasabi. Big thing is just like what quadrant of the sky you're in. At the, at the end of the day, if you're going 250 miles an hour and the debris is exploding and then you're you know pulling the parachute and there's winds and stuff you're not going to end up exactly over the you know at the water tower you're flying over but you know knowing if you're on the north side of the south side of the airport or you're 10 miles away or two miles away are, are valuable things for uh, ground to know when they're getting in their jeep to go drive around in the desert and try to find the pieces So it might seem a little uh, arbitrary to be doing the performance testing at 8,000. We're doing it at 8,000 simply because that's where Hawken uh, did all his calcs. So uh, all the CFD analysis he did for performance stuff was at 8,000. So we use that for our, uh, our quick performance check uh, at this part of the flight. Good. 
So here during the level XL out to VH, only 2,500 RPM, not 27. Uh, but as the airspeed's creeping up, you know, you're sort of leveling your plane, let it stabilize to get out to that max speed. Uh, it got really distracting that we were right up against the 170 that we had previously cleared the airplane to. You really, you know, when you do flutter, envelope expansion, et cetera, you really want to expand past where you're going to be operating. So being within even 10 miles an hour or 10% of the uh, expanded envelope is, is already nerve wracking. Again, um, you know, Lance Air is a proven airplane. Uh, 170 knots is not really fast for a Lance Air, but uh, the, the goal here with all the programs is to set up good habits and good procedures that um, uh, will protect us regardless of the program that we're in. So stalls are a really uh, important part of this program. So I think it's important we take a moment to sort of talk about what we we're trying to do at this part in the flight. The rate at which you decelerate the airplane in the FARS is written as uh, knots per second. So if you do a really slow decel, the nose ends up not very high, the airspeed ends up not very low, but you get a lot of the characteristics. If you were like an aircraft manufacturer and you were trying to show you had a really slow stall speed, you could do a really dramatic decel. So instead of you know 0.2 knots per second, uh, you could do 10 knots per second or 20 knots per second. What that means is that as you stall, the nose is gonna get really high, which means that uh, the airspeed gets lower, but then of course the, the, the characteristics would be much more dramatic, right? Because you have to get the nose from here to here and everything in between could be, you know, snap rolls and spins, etc. So for uh, this part in the program, um, we're not look, trying to write down exactly, you know, stall speed 68.25 knots. Uh, what we're trying to do is figure out sort of what is roughly the min speed, what is the uh, controls that are available at that min speed. We assume that the flat program is going to be limited by the elevator and the horizontal tail. This was a good chance to sort of get a feel for what's going on laterally. Or what's going on directionally. Or at these min speeds. Um, the important thing is the goal was not to uh, to nail the f uh, uh, far required decel rates and, and write down the exact right stall speed. So you guys all know, I don't need to tell you, but uh, the the wing that gets dropped on a stall uh, is very sensitive to uh, you know, ball position or, or beta or a, a side slip or however you want to talk about it. Uh, since this airplane doesn't have a ball or a, a yaw string, I was just going off of my gut as to when the airplane was flying straight. So when we had a couple stalls in the row, row with the same wing drop, you have to go off your, your gut about recentering the ball so to try to get the airplane to stall uh, evenly. So that's what I was trying to communicate with that radio transmission. Pitch bobble on 
that one and a left wing drop. Uh, 68. And I'm ready for RTB. How about you? All right. Do you want to get some more troop numbers yet? Sure. Uh, do you think it's worth uh, diving for some more speed first? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, power's come back uh, in. I'm going to climb up to 10,000. We'll clear it out to 180. All right. Switching tanks to the left tank. Eastbound, 10,000 feet. There's 170. We're going to re-clear it here. 170 is clear. 175. Ezra, where's your truck? Where's your truck? Where's your truck? Where's your truck? Whoa! Truck! Nice! To stall, no warning, just wing drop. So, uh, sorry, just back up. Debriefing, uh, flight five of the Hawken. Uh, Super Lancer 320. Okay, uh, let's see. Normal engine start, uh, taxi down. Uh, coming out of uh, run up, CHTs were 340 and uh, uh, like 150 on the oil, something like that. Um, obviously, there's more traffic and stuff, so there's more hangout, waiting for that yep. crap. Um, uh, powered up, uh, all that stuff. So, no mag drop, mag drop was fine. So that was gone just from running a little lean on the previous side and cleared the plugs yep. or whatever. So that matches what we were thinking. Um, power up to go. No issues with the spool up. You had mentioned that it didn't seem like it revved up. I had remembered that it had on the first flight, and I checked it here. And that one, I only saw 2600 RPM. 2600. So um, I tried, you know, I looked and confirmed it was 2600, and I was like, you know, push sprung against the blue knob and sprung against the black knob and everything was still at 2600. Um, so I don't know what that was, but it matches your observation. So my guess is that it probably wasn't 2700 on the first one either. Or, you know, I saw it like over rev and then it pulled down afterwards by the time <laughs> I went by you. But uh, anyway, so, so 2600. Time to altitude, did the uh, dives out to uh, 170 knots indicated. It only cost me like 500 feet. So again, you know, if you're... Uh, you know, below VH, <laughs> you don't have to die. Right, right. Works out real nice. Uh, did the comms on that all work? Um, comms worked fine. Okay. Uh, I guess that's a place I've spent a lot of effort trying to get my comms right. The yeah. risk being that, like, if the plane scatters, that w you would never get another call. So you want to make sure that you call, like, getting ready to, to shake the airplane, yeah. shook the airplane, next point, and, like, try so that you could follow along mm -hmm. and say, okay, he's still alive, he's still alive, and then, yeah. most importantly, data off when it's done, and you were able to follow, and there was no moment where you're like, is he still alive? Like, no. Okay, okay. good. Thank you for that. Um, so then I descended back down and did the, um, the cruise check at uh, 8,000 feet uh, at, or at uh, 2,500 RPM, wide open throttle, lean to, the first one was like 1,250 or so. Okay. Um, and that's where I was like, uh, just kissing right up against the limit and it was it made it hard to fly altitude and get everything else stable when I'm worried about uh, overspeeding the airplane. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, it's on the order of 170, you know, call it good. You said let's not do another dive, so I just climbed back up for the skies. Climb back up to altitude. Um, did my position calls make sense? Close enough, you probably could hear me if you really um, Maybe? Okay. Not when you're all the way up. Got it. Okay. Um, so that's something, again, that's something I try to work on. It. And you wouldn't be the first person that does understand what I'm trying to say when I'm saying where the airplane is. So right. it's awkward. You, know, you also don't want to spend 15 minutes and be like, well, I'm next to the water pole. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I don't know. So, so thanks for the feedback on that. Um, so went into the first stall, and I. Uh, so uh, if you're. 
if you use the appropriate bleed rate, which is uh, what, one to two knots per second, yes. right? The, um, there's a tendency, the faster the bleed rate, the higher the nose would be. And as a result, uh, the more, the scarier the part is where you correct from nose yes. to nose. So there's a tendency, and I definitely did it on the first one, to instead just take a real slow nibble. So I was, I was really watching my rate, and then the last five knots, I really let it go to shit. And I was down to like half an knot, a quarter knot per second. As a result, um, that also means that the indicated speed on stall would be higher. Um, and then, so coming in, it was like the left wing was trying to drop, so I'm, I'm um, adding right pedal to, to bring the wing up. That makes sense, yeah. Bring the ring, wing up, and then, um, I'm feeling the right pedal in, and then it drops to the right wing, and that's my indication of stall. No burble in the pitch axis. Like I said, I still had a long ways to go in the, in the, with the elevator. Uh, no bubble, nothing. Just the right wing started to go, and since we had talked about it, and I was reasonably concerned about it, I just pushed the nose back open. So uh, on all these, I was trimmed to uh, 120. Didn't touch the trim again. It was uh, increasing force, increasing force, actually really nicely until about 80. Okay. And then 80 it flattened out, you know, typically within you know, two tenths or something with that of stall speed, you'll see that, right? You'll flatten out and push it. At no point did I have to push. That's so I still had positive stability. force, right? Yeah. So it's, it, granted, I didn't have stick force on it, there's a lot going on, yep. but my indication was that my gut is I didn't have to push. Yep. The second one, I was able to be a little bit closer to one to two knots per second. Uh, and again, there was that tendency, you know, left wing's dropping, so I'm raising it with the rudder, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the right wing rolls off. So on the third one, I made it a point to just Use aileron to hold the left wing up. Try to keep the rudder pedal centered. Okay. I don't have a yaw string. I don't have a ball. Yeah. So, uh, so try to keep the, the uh, pedals centered, and then use aileron to hold it up. And as a result, I was able to first get bu 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 bubble right uh, coming. I can feel more in my ass than in the actual elevator. Okay. And then it dropped the left wing on that third, and that gave me maybe another three knots, right. three to four knots. So what I'm saying is the first two were at 70, and the third one was at 65. If anything, it was more like 68, 68. 63, but I'm a little embarrassed to say a number that low. Right, so right. if I was going to write it down, I would say 70, 70, 65. Okay. Um, so then we talked about it. We talked about climbing back up to altitude uh, to get another dive on it. So yeah. climb to altitude, dove it out to 180. Uh, used the same protocol as we talked about uh, for telling you where I was and what I was doing. Uh, and then to send it back down to 8,000 and get a run out. Make sure I set your true airspeed calculator and check the, uh, the GPS, uh, all that stuff. Um, no, I did not record the GPS speed on the second run, uh, but I'll have to. I moved the camera forward, so hopefully I'll capture that. Okay. Good. Uh, but in general, it seemed like the indicator speed was tracking really well with ground speed, and that there was the same. There was there's no error. So it's sort of like okay, that's cool. Um, came back in. I don't know if you saw it, but he gave me direct to final. Yes. <laughs> And I had all this altitude to get rid of, so I like slowed down, threw the gear out. I still couldn't come down fast enough. We had serious, had to go around. And, uh, not, not much fun, but uh, the landing was fine. I didn't bounce it on that one, so whatever. Uh, came back in, normal shutdown. I didn't do a run up on the shutdown. I didn't do a you know, whatever. Yeah. So I'm going to check. And uh, that's all I had. Anything for you? No. And so, you had 170 for the cruise numbers with the relatively dirty right. indicated. Indicated 210 miles true with the wheel. Right, right. About 190. 90 knots. It's good numbers based upon all the stuff that is on it right now. So, so yeah, so coming out of this, right, there's obviously like we, we cleared envelope that we never cleared before. We yep. successfully flew. You're coming back with positive. Um, speed stuff that's going to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, uh, feedback from me. I mean, how did today go? We didn't have Justin here adding value. Do you feel like I'm scooting out of here before we got anything done? You feel no, like no, no, no. I think, I think for today it went really well. Okay. Um, the, the only thing that we should need a uh, uh, chase for would be, you know, the critical right. things like flaps or whatever. In the first flight that was absolutely there. And, oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, but for other, flat, for other flights, like when we have cleared all the issues, right. I think you alone will be fine. Right. And then the, but I mean, the drive up here at the comms, I mean, just just a chance. I've never asked you how we're doing. So just sure. wanted... No, I think we're doing just fine. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good. Well, it was a good day and uh, yes, it's fun to have a win. Yes. Yes. No, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked, really. You know, <laughs> good. Finally getting this off the ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely had worse days than this one. Yeah. Oh, no, this is really cool.
doing that rotary back east. <laughs> 